All right, continuing on part two for trigonometric ratios. So just a recap, remember we talked about um, th there's a, a set of ratios here that we use when we designate theta to be a particular angle. And once we have designated theta, we define uh, our sine to be opposite over hypotenuse, cosine to be adjacent over hypotenuse, and tangent to be, wow, it's glitchy here, opposite over adjacent. And remember those are, designations with respect to theta. So for example, if I call theta um, angle B here, then sine of theta is going to be the opposite side over the hypotenuse, because the hypotenuse is always across from the right angle. Cosine of theta is going to be the adjacent side over its hypotenuse. And then the tangent of theta is the opposite over the uh, adjacent. So today we're going to actually be using um, our calculator to, to evaluate these ratios for degrees that aren't very, or we'll say angles that aren't very friendly. Um, so when you are finding your, your degree mode, this is, you want to be, let's say um, that we want to be in this mode instead of radians. Okay, you can just take a second, eight caught up there. If you're using a scientific calculator, it's actually just a button right at the top. So there's like a, um, a line of buttons there, second, not if you hit second. Uh, yeah, so if you're looking at the line on the calculator, it says second D R G D E L. You want to actually hit the D R G button and just make sure that you're in degrees instead of radians. So we're going to be using a calculator to approximate these values and we're rounding to the nearest thousandth. So sine of 30, so there's actually a button on my calculator. I just hit sine, type in 30, assuming I'm in the proper mode, hit enter, and I get 0 0.5. There's no rounding necessary there. Tangent of 45 degrees, again, I'm just hitting the tangent button, typing in 45, hitting enter, and I get one. For cosine 77, I type, hit my cosine button, type 77, hit enter, and this one I'm going to have to round. So I have 0 0.22, and then if I round it up, 5. Okay, sine of 6 degrees. So I'm hitting sine 6. I'm going to have to round this one too. Um, 0 0.105. Okay, so again, these are simplified ratios. Notice that these two are not friendly because the, um, in this case, the adjacent hypotenuse pairing, and in this case, the opposite hypotenuse pairing, would have reduced to a ratio that was not very friendly. Okay, so we will be using these buttons in diagrams where it's not, um, the, the sides are not labeled. So, um, but in this case, we want to label this triangle with opposite, adjacent, and hypotenuse. So with respect to, to my angle here, the opposite side would be x. 10 is my hypotenuse. Um, and then this other side down, the base there is the adjacent side. Okay, so I just have my labels here. Now we know that if we are looking to find x and 40 degrees, well, first of all, you might be tempted to try and solve for the missing side with Pythagorean theorem, but we only have one side that's known, so we, we're at a standstill there. But we can build an equation to solve. So we know that with respect to the 40 degree angle, we have the hypo opposite and the hypotenuse. That's calling out the sine ratio, right? So if I go ahead and say that the sine of 40 degrees equals the opposite, which is x, over 10, which is the hypotenuse, now I've built an equation where I can solve for x, right? So um, to get x alone, I want to multiply both sides by 10. So these cancel. So I have 10 times the sine of 40, which I have to type into my calculator. And that's about 0 0.643. That would equal x. So if I multiply that by 10, I get 6.423 is x. Okay. And you do always want to, to see, does it make sense in the context of the, the um, diagram, right? Because this is a leg, we expect it to be shorter than the hypotenuse, which is 10. So yes, this does make sense because it is shorter than the hypotenuse. Okay. Next one, if we're labeling with respect to 51 degrees, again, we have the opposite and the hypotenuse. So that's calling out the sine again. So sine of 51 degrees equals the opposite, which is x, 
over 15, which is the hypotenuse. Remember, we're trying to get x alone, so I want to, in this case, multiply both sides by 15. These cancel. Um, sine of 51, let's see what we get there. That's 0. 0.777. So I have 15 times 0. 0.777 equal to x. So if I multiply that by 15, I get 11.657, okay? And then that does make sense as well because it's shorter than the hypotenuse. Remember, hypotenuse always has to be the longest side. So yes, this makes sense too. Okay, next one, kind of split from the instructions there, but we have 38 degrees. And with respect to this guy, we have the adjacent and the hypotenuse. So that's screaming out cosine. So we know cosine of 38 degrees equals the adjacent, which is y, over the hypotenuse, which is 14. To free the y, we need to multiply both sides by 14. These cancel. So cosine of 38 times 14 should give us 11.032. And that is, again, shorter than the hypotenuse. We expect that if that's a leg, so yes, this makes sense too. Now we're going to explore some diagrams and just solve for the unknowns. So with respect to 55, I have the opposite and the adjacent. So those are the two values for a tangent ratio. So I would say the tangent of 55 equals z over 8. To get rid of um, that 8, I need to multiply it to both sides. Tangent of 55 is 1.42, so I'm taking 8 times... 1.428 to get z. So if I multiply that by 8, I get 11.425 for z. And those were both legs, so we weren't expecting one to be necessarily um, longer than the other, unless we found that missing angle. But yeah, that's good to go. Okay, now we have 51 degrees. With respect to that angle, we have the adjacent and the hypotenuse that are labeled. So those are the two elements of the cosine ratio. So cosine of 51 degrees equals the adjacent, which is 8, over the unknown. So this one's a little bit different because now the variable's stuck in the denominator. So I actually have to multiply y to both sides to get it out of the denominator. So y cosine 51, let's show it like this, equals um, 8. And now I would divide both sides by cosine of 51. So these cancel, meaning my y is isolated. Cosine of 51 degrees, if I type that out, is about equal to 0 0.629. So if I do um, 8 divided by 0 0.629, we're going to get it about equal to 12.719. So it's a little bit different when you're solving for um, a variable in the denominator. Okay, next guy, we have 45 degrees here, um, adjacent and hypotenuse. So we know those are the elements of cosine once again. So cosine 45 degrees equals 8 over y. Notice that the variable is again in the denominator. So if I multiply the y to both sides, y cosine 45, that just pulls it out of the denominator. Now divide both sides by cosine 45 to isolate that variable. So these cancel. So if I do 8 divided by cosine of 45, we get 11.314 if we round. Cool. Next one, 60 degrees here with respect to that guy, adjacent and opposite. Those are the elements of the tangent ratio. So tangent of 60 equals opposite, so w, over adjacent, which is 3. So this is the one that we, we don't mind, right? We just have to multiply that 3 over to cancel. Tangent of 60 is 1.732. So we just multiply that by 3 to get w. So 5.196 is w. That's approximation 2. Cool. Okay, and now we have a more complex diagram. So we want to solve for x in this diagram, and again, round to the nearest tenth. So um, we're a little stuck here. So now we're trying to get this guy. We are limited in our information on the triangle on the left because I only know its degree or its angle. It's 
And so, um, but if I use my Pythagorean theorem on these elements, so on the tiny triangle, I could find the height here, which would give me a side for the big triangle. So I'm going to go ahead and say that um, if we're using a squared plus b squared equals c squared, and we'll go ahead and call a 11 and c 21. So if I do 21 squared minus 11 squared, b squared is equal to 320, which is not a perfect square. Yeah, so we're going to have to simplify that. So 320, if I do a factor tree, breaks into 2 and 160. 160 also is not a perfect square, but that would break into 2 and 16. 16 breaks into 4 and 4. Wait a minute. Did I miss you? That's not 2 and 16. 10 and 16. I'm going to 6. Um, 10 and 16. That's 4 and 4 here. But um, my 10 breaks into 2 and 5. And remember, when we're doing square root simplifications, we're looking for pairs. So I have a pair of 2s, pair of 4s. So I would say that B equals, I pull out a 2, I pull out a 4, I have a 5 remaining. So that would be 8 root 5. So that is the height here, 8 root 5. So if I'm now able to um, notice that with respect to 43 degrees, this is an opposite and the hypotenuse. And those are the elements of a sine ratio. So sine of 43 degrees equals 8 root 5, opposite, over hypotenuse, which is x. Variables in the denominator, once again. Um, oh, and we're also, we're dealing with, we're going to be rounding anyway, so we could actually type that 8 root 5 into our calculator. But if I multiply x to both sides to just clear it from the denominator, then really what I'm going to have to type into my calculator, once I divide both sides by sine 43, is 8 root 5. So if I do 8 times root 5, that, and I'm dividing it by sine of 43, I should get 26.22. Well, then the 9 will actually round it up as well. So 2, 3, 0. So it's a little more complex when you have to kind of use two different theorems. But that is it for our day seven. Thanks for watching, guys.